Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of uh, Tactics for Everyone by Mikhail Oleksienko. Let's take a look at this position. It's black to move. Um, while uh, I'll be talking, you can try to look into the position. And I'm going to run Stockfish just for a few seconds so you can see that if you're using um, engines, you can see this is the evaluation of the position. 0, 0.00, depth 24. I'm going to switch it off for a second. And now let's take a look. Like normally speaking, if you were to check this position on your own, you would be like, okay, engine gives zeros here, especially if you're using some uh, internet platforms to watch tournaments like Chess Bomb or Chess 24. Usually they don't have depths more than 22 or 23 of the engine. And you make some assumptions about the evaluation of the position uh, if you don't watch with the live commentary GM, with the GMs provide. Let's take a human eye at the position. So what is going on? The position, okay, now count the pieces, one, two, three, four, five, same number of pieces. That's good, that's a good start. So now we should look at, uh, uh, at what is going on with the pieces and pawn structure. So white has two bishops, but this bishop on b2 is completely out of the game and bishop on g2 is out of the game, but it may, may join the game in the future. For example, there's extremely weak diagonal right here. If that bishop joins, that could be like checkmate for black, but luckily it's black to move. So what kind of problems do white have and black have? But I want to use the method that, that I described in my video series about tactics that you can find the link below the video. You can watch some free uh, um, free samples and if you like what you see you can go ahead and make your purchase. So let's take a look from practical perspective on this position. What I mean by that is the following. What is wrong with White's position from tactical point of view? The things that I pointed out just now were strategical, positional kind of stuff, like bad pieces, etc., etc. But there are some signs of possible combination that can like, give you an idea of even where to look for tactics. You cannot look for tactics on every move. You're not stockfish, right? And this is an example where stockfish cannot see tactics unless you give it a lot of time. All right, so from tactical point of view, undefended pieces. Well, the pawn on d3 is only one piece that being undefended pawn on d3. But you cannot even attack it in the, with a decent legal move, right? So it seems that white has all together, right? No bad pieces from tactical point of view. Nothing is undefended. White is doing all right. But there's one tiny sign of what is wrong with white's position. One of less common signs is the piece, a piece can barely move. If you look carefully at White's position, the queen on h4 can barely move. Well, legally speaking, it can move, it would just be lost, right? That's a sign. If a piece cannot move, maybe you can trap it there. So let's focus our attention on that queen. Okay, it cannot move. How can we attack it? There's only one way to attack it. It's g5, right? If we want to trap that queen, we need to go g5 now because otherwise white could go g5 and the queen could escape, right? So assuming we're looking for a win. So after g5, white has only one move, queen h5. That's a good sign. If your opponent has only one move, uh, maybe you should look into it closer. But g5 is a horrible strategical decision. It weakens all the white squares and gives... Uh, gives white possibility of undermining our king with h4, right? And there's no way to attack the queen even in two moves, right? So normally you would say, no, I'm not doing that. But if you keep looking, you would see that you can attack it three moves later with your rook, right? Your bishop is in the way. It seems so long, come on. But in the beginning, I pointed out that white's bishops cannot join the game. White's rook can join the game, rook c1, but the queen just moves and controls all the penetration squares. So rook f7, rook h7 is the winning plan. How do we execute it? We need to move the bishop and we need to move the rook. So it just makes sense to move the rook first from this logical perspective. If you move the bishop first, you have only this way of winning the queen, right? But if you start with rook f7, you have two options for your bishop. It doesn't seem relevant, right? Come on, who cares? No, it's better to have more options. 
That's why rook f7 and bishop is going to move somewhere, I'm not sure yet where, and rook h7 trapping the queen. So let's see which of white's pieces could potentially help. Bishop. Well, it's like a long journey for the bishop, but this is a very important one. Bishop can go to f3. We move our bishop to f8. Bishop goes to d1. And we cannot really stop bishop b3. Rook h7, bishop b3 check, and king h8, the queen is gone. All right. This is actually the critical reason. If you start with bishop h8, if you think, ah, there's no difference, always look for difference. Assuming you have time, of course, because if you find the difference, you would win the game, and that would be it. If you don't find it and it was there, you could just lose. Like in this case, bishop h8, black is in trouble, because bishop f3, if you keep on doing this, it's bishop d1, you cannot stop bishop b3, as I pointed out, and rook h7, bishop b3 check, you have to go king g7, the queen escapes, and black has a horrible position. Well, white could have included rook c1 if white wanted to. So rook f7, what can white do? Well, white can go rook c1, but we just move the queen, say, to d6. And nothing has changed, bishop f8 or bishop h8 with rook h7 to follow. The rook from f2 can only help by sacrificing itself. Another way to save the queen is h4. Bishop goes to f8, h takes g5, and rook h7, the queen is still trapped. And that's it. That is the winning line. The problem with this line is that it's quite long. Well, but it shouldn't be long for the engine, right? So you may think, oh, maybe, maybe there is no win. The engine would, would see it immediately. These are engines. They can see everything, especially tactics. All right. Depths 22. Stockfish is still looking. Chess bomb, chess 24, all the websites. I, I almost never see depths more than 23. This is an example where Stockfish is just not seeing the win. I'll give it a second. I think my Stockfish gave the win at depth 28, but then I don't want to wait for so long. I'm just going to help him. You have to help the engines. You have to help the engines. You should like ask, hold on a second. Can't I like trap the queen? It's not even suggesting g5. Take a look. It's not suggesting. You should help the engine. g5. It says queen h5. Okay, don't give up. Come on, Stockfish. Oh my god, it says white is winning. This is embarrassing. Not for me, for the engine. Come on, rook f7. Oops! What happened, stockfish? What happened, my poor stockfish? You didn't see rook f7? This is embarrassing. This is one of the most powerful engines of, of our time, and it's just not seeing the win. The best defense being h4. Bishop, why bishop f8 is wrong? Rook c1 and rook c Oh, my bad, guys. Rook c1, queen d6, rook c to f1, and on rook h7, the rook f6 attacks my queen. I did not see that one. So this is so fun. Here, bishop h8 is winning. Well, thank you, Stockfish. you not that bad after all. And after a takes g, rook, g, rook h7. What is fun, that in one line, like uh, after bishop to f3, you need your bishop on f8 to keep h8 for the king but after h4 you need the bishop on h8 that was i was talking about even if you don't see all of these lines you still need to give you well this is just common sense just gives you more options all right guys thanks for watching if you want to learn more about how to find tactics like this click the link below the video where you can check out my well lesson online and if you like what you see, you can go ahead and purchase. Like this video, share with your friends. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.